There's another person in the room that you don't know about, but they had a law name for him. It's called the Ridgeway Decision. And he went and fought the uh, electrical unions to get blacks put in them. His name is Richard Ridgeway. That law lasted for 25 years till uh, everybody was hired in the Electrical Workers Union. Could you tell me something about the Ridgeway Law? Oh, the Ridgeway Law. <laughs> oh, boy. That's Alice Terms. I'm on it. Uh, it the Ridgeway Law, well, let me see how that started. 1969, I was working for Commonwealth Edison. And an article came out in the uh, paper that they were going to allow African Americans into the union, electrical union, local 134, IBEW. Well, I had a pretty good job with Edison as a just finished substation operating school, and nobody got laid off at Edison. You know, I, nobody got laid off at Edison. You get back, back, figure you had a lifetime job. But I went because it was a dollar more, a dollar and a half more that they were paying in construction. I worked both jobs. I worked at Edison at night, and I, I went on into the union, but as a temporary, uh, what they call a permit man. You didn't have full rights. At that time, they had, I'm just guessing, they had, well, 9,000 journeyman electricians, A-card a members, and the permit, uh, 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 out of that 9,000, there was maybe a handful of African Americans that were A card members, maybe about 12, 20, maybe, maybe, maybe as many as 20, but I doubt if it was more than that. And hardly no Hispanics, all right? I had one Hispanic friend of mine. Well, anyway, the 19th, when I, when I thought that this job was good, I let Edison go, and soon after then I got laid off. I got started getting laid off. I'd be the last one brought on and the, and the first one laid off on every job. Well, I was working on the Sears Towers. We were building the Sears Towers. And uh, around about the 80th floor, November came along, 1972. I know that because my daughter was born in 72. And that's what I just went back to work a few months early in July, right after she was born. And I got laid off in November. I said, man, I'm tired of this here. The last one hired and the first one laid off. And here it is, a union got 9,000 jobs. Out of 9,000 jobs, eight card members, 12 are black. Let's see, about 12 to 20. I said, this stuff got to change. So I went to Urban League. Urban League said, go to EOC. I went to EOC. EOC investigated my plane of discrimination. It gave me a right to sue letter. I went back early. Early say it was a young guy who just graduated Northwestern <laughs> Law School named Judson Miner. He said, go see him, Attorney Judson Miner. I think I was probably Judd's first case. I came out and uh, uh, brought him the right to sue letter. And we initiated what was called the Ridgeway versus Local 134 IBEW, discrimination uh, class action suit for blacks and Hispanics. That was 72 when I went to EOC. 1984, I got a call from Judson Minor telling me they'd made a settlement. And first thing when somebody said they made a law settlement, I, first thing I asked, well, Judd, how much I got, uh, did I get? Now, I'm in Saudi Arabia, Judd's back in Chicago, tell, talking on the phone. He said, well, Richie got $1,500. I said, Judd, $1,500 and 12 years of litigation? <laughs> I said, it sounds like I lost. <laughs> he said, no, we got 
2,000 cards, union cards, A cards for blacks and Hispanics, and we got you a card. I said, Judd, I'm making $96,000 a year. What the hell I want a union card for <laughs> now? <laughs> but then I thought, I said, God been good to me. I said, I'm making more money than I ever thought I was going to make in my life. So I went on and agreed to this settlement so that other people could work. And I've never looked back on it. I always look back and say, hey, I was the greatest thing I did. And for some reason, Alice and them started calling it after it was. It lasted from 1984 when the decree was settled. It lasted, the court, it was under court supervision until the end of 1999, beginning of 2000. It meant input, every apprenticeship program had to have 50% white, 40% black, and 10% Hispanic, because that was the makeup of Chicago when I went to EEOC with this discrimination complaint. After the suit was over with, the participation of blacks and Hispanic has went back to the 60s, when it, way, the way it was in the 60s. I'm still fighting. I even though the law is over with, people still come to me to ask them to help and get more blacks and Hispanics. And I always take my time and do that because it's something I initiated in 72, and people recognize it now as the so-called Ridgeway Law. And I feel good that, like I say, you did something to help other people in your life. You know, you brought your people up a step and that's what life is all about. So we, we back to where it was in the 60s, but I'm helping other young kids now that, that come out of public Chicago public schools, come out of schools in Cook County, uh, get into the union. I'm gonna always fight and be there for, even though the Ridgeway law is over with now, but I, I, I look for some young kid to come up and start it over again to get more representation for this has got to be fair to everybody. The unions are having problems now all over this country. People don't even want to use them because they're so high. But you got to make it fair for everybody. It's got to be if it's fair for everybody, then I don't mind. But if it's not fair, if you're discriminating, I don't know where they come up with these big ideas uh, of, of, of keeping uh, black kids out and Hispanic kids out of the union. I don't know why people just want to do that. But some people, you, they, they, they're going to be like that all the time. So you got to always, if you see it, do something about it as much as you can and fight it. You know, and you're going to be fighting this till the day you die because it is not going to change unless you tra help make a change. That's the Ridgeway Law. I'm, I'm proud that they call it after me now all these years. I, uh, I'm coming down here and I got a little tears in my eyes because uh, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, emotional about uh, the things that we've accomplished and the things we haven't accomplished in life, but the things we're still trying to do to make things right for everybody.